was coming down here on the plane um, from London uh, yesterday and uh, was reading the new Time magazine. Uh, like you guys have seen this, Time magazine is not normally something that one reads for professional wisdom, but um, it's the wireless issue. And um, one of the briefs I'd gotten from Uday was to talk a bit about the changing uh, nature of the consumer and the consumer brands <coughs> to the mobile. So I thought I'd start today um, by, because uh, some of the, some of the, the questions and they had a, a poll across um, multiple nations. And I'd like to read a couple of the questions and see uh, the audience uh, the audience answers. You might be surprised, or maybe the Indians probably won't be surprised by, by some of the um, results of this. So how many people do, do, you, do you think <coughs> being constantly connected by technology is mostly helpful or a burden? How many for helpful? Anybody burden? Anybody find it a burden? Okay. It's interesting. So India on that, India was the highest country for thinking helpful. 94% of Indians said it's helpful. The, the lowest uh, was the United States, 76%, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, do you need to have the latest technology? How many people do you need to have the latest technology? So that's a little bit less than half. Um, how many people... No, don't need don't need the latest technology. It's, it's pretty divided. So the U.S. was 18% need to have. India, 57% need to have, which I found kind of shocking, being, being, maybe because of originally Americans. And then finally, um, where do you place your mobile device while sleeping at night? 68% <laughs> is next to the bed. Maybe this could get this turns into some sociological implications. We can have a discussion, a breakout session. That could be a whole other discussion about people and their wives and everything. So, yeah. um, but there are a lot. I mean, this is actually worth reading. It's an interesting, interesting little take. I just wanted to touch on um, on four kind of points. Um, one are about brand about brands is bridges, building bridges and building brands across the world. Which is and, and I, maybe I should introduce myself mm -hmm. a little bit. I first came to India in the early '90s, and I, I brought CNN to this country from the business side. So I set up the advertising sales offices and some of the things that Renee was just referring to, the rolling up their sleeves. Uh, then I went into the uh, internet business in the mid-90s, uh, worked for AOL. I ran a company called CompuServe, which we had bought. Some of the British people may remember CompuServe, and I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, and then um, uh, after that, um, I, I basically stayed in digital media, um, a combination of starting my own companies and working um, to extend or run the international operations for American internet companies. And I'll give a couple of examples of lessons learned from that time frame as well. And then finally, most recently, um, kind of by accident, uh, I got involved in the hospitality industry, so a totally different industry. And um, because it's, it's such a large opportunity in India, the, the focus of the industry is to build, is to bring and build top hospitality brands, mainly from the UK, the United States, into India. Uh, the first one is Soho House. Some of you may be familiar with the great UK brand, and Chiconi's Restaurant, which is another high-end uh, restaurant in the UK. Um, so most of my experience has been in media and in internet, and I have a couple of years now of hospitality experience, and I wanted to try to um, give a few lessons and stimulate conversation more than anything else, um, and, and hopefully put a few things on the table that will make people think. Um, brands is bridges. Um, some of the lessons about that, that I've had in terms of Building, uh, building, especially technology brands, is that it's actually not at all about the technology. It's actually about the people. Um, when SMS messages, which were invented in England by a BT engineer, when that was invented, no one even thought there was an application. The engineers thought this is a good way for us to communicate while we're on a job. But no one foresaw, um, and in fact, until much later, until um, the marketing people got involved, that they actually find that this is actually quite a big business, which actually drove a lot of mobile revenues for, for quite some time. Ringtones were a similar phenomenon. Ringtones, no one in the music industry thought that that was ever going to amount to anything. And actually, ringtones became the largest revenue category for the music industry in several countries. I, I, in fact, in India, it may even still be Still is. the largest one. Um, so that's a couple of, of, of thoughts to, to kind of to think about when you're, when you're building your companies and your brands, is to always try to expect the unexpected. Um, I think it was Alan Key that said, best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I mean, I think that's got to be the objective, just try to help create the future yourself as you're going along. Um, the second point is how to adapt brands. So the question here for me has always been when I've been taking 
a company, the, one of the most recent ones was MySpace. I launched an international business from MySpace. Now, that's, that's a very strong brand focused on community. Um, but we had to adapt in each country in a different way. Um, so uh, how do you do that? Well, you have to understand how and try to, try to predict and, and help people understand how to use that brand and offer them the tools that the mo make it the most relevant for them. So if I run in sort of chronological order, my, my experience in India, um, CNN, we introduced local news programming to CNN, but we were very careful not to localize CNN, if you see the difference. So it's still perceived as a non-biased, you know, to a certain extent biased in an American sense, but not able to be kind of bought or influenced by local <coughs> conditions. But we then did insert sort of local news programming. Um, in the case of MySpace, in the UK, we, we started the first ever, it was, we made the first ever user-generated film. So the entire film, uh, except for the script, but the casting of, the, of course, the cast, the, cho the choice of the director, um, everything was done through MySpace. This is, um, um, and it ended up being, the film wasn't that good, of course, but it was, but it was an interesting marketing exercise, and it got a lot of momentum. People really participated and engaged. In France, uh, that idea didn't work at all. We ended up doing a music a similar thing, a battle of the bands. And the reason there was that in France, there's very few live, uh, live music venues. So we were kind of solving a different problem using the community and the technology. Um, and finally, with CompuServe, um, when I took over as main director of CompuServe in the UK, the US had taken, able to take CompuServe and made it sort of a fighter brand, sort of a lower priced brand. And in the UK, for a number of reasons, that wouldn't have worked. We had a higher cost base, we had a number of other challenges. So we actually took it the other way, and we made it for busy professionals. And there was a lot of concern in the US that this wouldn't work, and actually it worked very well because we tailored the service. So we kept the brand heritage, but we tailored the service for those people. So those are a few thoughts about, um, about brands and, and how you can adapt them and what you need to <coughs> stay true to. And then finally, the biggest question is, if you're, for any of you entrepreneurs out there, um, do you want to make your own brand, develop your own brand, and create that, which of course is very, very difficult and a huge risk, or work with a leader. Um, in my case, with Soho House, it was very clear that they were so far ahead of everybody else, including anything we could probably try to do, that it made sense to work with them to collaborate and to learn the lessons to tech transfer, if you will. Um, so that's, that's another big question, and, but, and I'll leave you with the final thought, getting back to where we started. I think in India, the one area where um, Indian companies really can and really do have the potential to truly create their own, not only their own brands for this country, but their own brands, which can then extend globally, is in mobile. Because if you have about 300 million people, depending on which statistics you believe, are coming online, 90% of mobile devices in the next three or four years. And when you have such a shift, um, because the, the brands and the services that are going to be on those devices, we don't even know what they all are yet. So that gives a great opportunity to really innovate and really create something entirely new. So thanks very much for those comments out for Great. Thanks, David.